What's up everyone, this is Logan Schinholzer with Contractor Growth Network and today I'm gonna to walk you through how to actually build a marketing plan for your contracting business. Now as a small business owner myself, I totally get the day-to-day -day grind that it takes to run a business and the last thing that we wanna do is plan. Most people that start a business, they are on the DISC assessment profile they're more on the D or a DI side of things. And what D or DI means is that you're, you're very motivated and you are a visionary and you're this and you're that, but you're not a day-to-day -day operator. I myself am a DI personality. I am not a natural planner. It's not in my inherent nature to sit down and fully map out a, a full marketing plan or a full budget or a full this. So what I'm teaching you today is something that I do for my own company, but trust me, it was not easy at first. Now, it's, it's just like clockwork where it's all set up, but most of us business owners that start something, we don't start it because we're super calculated and organized. We start it because we're okay with flying by the seat of our pants and we'll figure it out along the way, but eventually that is gonna stop you from growing because there is no plan of action, there is no set path moving forward, we get stuck and then we get put in that day-to-day -day grind and we can't break out and we can't grow. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we need to figure out an overall theme or concept for the year. What I mean by theme or concept, just saying, oh, I wanna get more leads, that is not a theme or a concept. One of the most popular themes or concepts is gonna be education. You wanna make this year the year of educating your customers or prospects. If you can educate people about your service, about your product, not necessarily about you as a company, but more so about the service that you offer, then you are empowering people. Because when people understand how things work, why things work, stuff like that, they feel way more comfortable moving forward with the product. And if you're the one that teaches them, they're gonna feel more comfortable moving forward with you. So you need to really come up with an overall theme of what you want to accomplish this year. And it can't be, I wanna get more leads or more sales or more customers because those are what's called a lagging metric. That's a metric that you really can't control. You can't control how many uh, new, how much you're selling. You can control how much you're educating people, things like that. So come up with a theme that you know you can control yourself. Then once you have the theme, the next step is gonna be reverse engineer that. Let's say the theme is to educate. Now we gotta figure out how, what is the vehicle for us to educate everybody? And this could be videos, this could be blogs, this could be seminars, but you need to actually come up with the how behind your mission. How are you gonna accomplish that mission? So first we have the mission or the overall theme of the year, and then now we have the actual how. Then from there, we wanna create content around that. So for example, if your how is the education side of things and you really wanna teach people how to do stuff in the form of video, well now we gotta actually come up with the content that goes in the video. So if you notice what we're doing is we're starting off with a very broad term and we're slowly whittling it down into the specifics of the day to day on how to actually make this thing happen. So. Now that we know we wanna produce, how do we educate the masses? We wanna get a YouTube channel up and going. And then from there, once we know that we wanna get the YouTube channel up and going, what videos do we need? How do we map out the exact videos? What type of videos to shoot? Where are we gonna do it? Because if we are not consistent with it, then it's just not gonna work out. Everybody goes in with a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Now that's something that I made up right here on the spot, myself and Mike Tyson. If you go in with a plan that is way too over the top, way too aggressive, you're gonna fail the first time that something doesn't go your way. So if you have a plan of, I wanna shoot a video every single day, what happens if it's raining outside and it's tough to shoot a video that day? Well, you're gonna fail, and just like with dieting, once you fail once, it's way easier to fail a second time. So pick something that is way more and way, uh, way easier and way more achievable than you think it's gonna be. Maybe one video, per week. And the video has to be on uh, a, a how to do something related to your company. So that's the third part is gonna be pick information or pick content that you know is realistic for you, but also pick a consistent number of times to do it that you can hit 
even on a bad week. So the next part that we're gonna do is play a game with yourself called best case, worst case scenario. So with this marketing plan, I know we're planning this out ahead. The easiest thing to do is to feel like you're getting bogged down in work and it's too hard to follow through. It's too hard to, to come up with the video that week because of whatever. But play worst case, best case with yourself. And what I mean by that is ask yourself, if I do this, if I make this video and I commit to making this video, what is the worst case scenario? And in that case, you probably lose one hour because if you're doing one video per week, you probably lose an hour per week that you could be doing something else. Best case scenario is that enough people see this and they start to come to your website and you actually get a few jobs off of it. So actually play out the real life, what's the worst case scenario and what's the best case scenario for your, you know, actually executing on your plan. The very last piece of all this really is to be execute. We can plan it all out. We can talk about it, but if you don't actually take action on this, then you're gonna have the exact same year of business that you had last year. And if you're watching this video, you probably wanna grow from last year's year. So if you don't execute and you don't take action, then you would have just wasted 10, 12 minutes watching this video. So make sure you actually do something with it. So let me run down everything one more time. First, have an overall theme of the year. Next is gonna be once you have that theme, actually reverse engineer that theme. Figure out how can you make this happen. The next step down is gonna be the content. Produce content around that theme. Figure out what you need to be talking about and what the vehicle is to make that how happen. The fourth part, play worst case, best case scenario. Really write down, if you follow through on this, what's the worst thing that can happen and what's the best thing that can happen. And you're gonna realize that the downside is very minimal compared to the upside. And last but not least, you need to execute and be consistent. Let me walk you through an actual marketing plan of a client of ours that I just flew up there and put this in place with them. Pond Company, my dad's Pond Company up in Maryland. Their theme of the year is they want people to experience ponds. And here's why. The number one reason why somebody buys a pond from them is because they grew up with near water, whether it's the ocean or a lake or a pond, and they want their kids to experience the same sights and sounds of running water. So the overall theme is, if we can get people to experience the pond, then they have a much better chance of moving forward and buying a pond, thus increasing sales for Premier Ponds. So how do we do that? Well, we actually came up with seven different dates throughout the year, when it's once a month starting in April and ending in October, where people will come out to the pond and get to experience it. Whether it's they learn how, you know, for the first two months, they learn how to clean a pond. Then the next three months, they actually get to sit by a pond and get served beer and wine and food. And in the last two months, they learn how to clean it again and get it ready for winter time. So we're finding seven different ways to get people involved and get prospects to experience what a pond is like. And then there's always the hesitation. Well, that sounds great, but and I said, okay, great. Let's play worst case, best case scenario. For this springtime pond cleaning experience, they invite people, they get to clean the pond anyway at a client's house. They're just gonna invite the outside world to come there, watch them and learn how to do it themselves. And the idea is to educate homeowners and say, this is how you can clean your own pond. And homeowners, what has happened in the past is they've, they've always said, well, that's too expensive. I don't want you to clean my pond because it's not worth that much. When they finally realize what all goes into it, they're more than happy to pay. So by having homeowners come, prospects come, and actually learn how to clean the pond, they will see the value in it and they will be okay with paying that money. And I asked them, I said, what's worst case? And they said, worst case is we put this on, we end up, instead of being able to uh, clean seven ponds that day, we end up only cleaning the one pond, but the other six ponds that we gotta clean, we just got to do it another day. So long story short, they're gonna lose one day of production that month, worst case scenario, if it rains and nobody shows up. I said, great, what's best case scenario? They said, well, best case scenario is we probably get about 10 new annual clients, which means that they make another 20 grand every single year because of this one cleaning. So play, they, they played worst case, best case, and for them, losing one day, potentially, of production is worth having recurring clients over and over and over and make a lot of money. And now, 
The last part is to, is to actually execute on it. What we're doing with that is we're putting together a plan of how do we actually get people to this event. So that is the last step is actually hammering out the days and moving forward with it. But this year we are taking this experiential side of ponds to the next level. So we are figuring out one, they want the experience. Number two is we're gonna do these pond tours and pond cleanings. Part three is we have tons of content that we're producing via video, how to clean a pond, what goes into a pond, all this stuff, and all of that nurtures these prospects so they understand more about what goes into a cleaning but may not know everything. So that's why we wanna get them to that cleaning. Then we played worst case, best case, so they know that the downside of it is one day of production lost versus making a lot of money on the uh, high end of things. And the last but not least is we're actually have to come sit down and execute on it. So that's how you really put together a marketing plan for the year. It's nothing crazy. We're taking up seven days out of the year. And last year, based off of the one experience day that they put together, they sold tens of thousands of dollars worth of work. So imagine what seven of those days is gonna do for them. Put together a plan, make it super easy, and all we're doing is we're taking one day a month away from them. That's easy enough that they can make sure that they get this thing done and their 2020 is gonna be way better off. So do me a favor, if you like this stuff, hit the like button, it helps out the YouTube algorithm, and it'll let me know, hey Logan, that made sense and I appreciate you doing this. Thank you very much.